Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Esports Bunny, ZSM, Mac 10, whatever you want to call me, and a little bit of insanity has been brought to my attention today. Strap yourselves right the fuck in, and we'll get started in just a moment. Thanks for watching Esports Monies. Subscribe and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any of this questionable content. And if you hit the like button, I'll probably get more views or something, so go on and do that too, I guess. Thanks. Okay, so today is about 10, we are... I'm recording this at about 10 p.m. on the 9th of January of 2018, and this post is on the front page of the r slash dota 2 subreddit. It's called Slasher on Observer Wards, and the title of the video is PO, uh, POS5 Position 5 Sucks, Remove Observer Wards, uh, question mark. And I want to preface this video with nothing personal, no offense to Slasher, I'm actually Steam friends with Slasher, we've talked about doing podcasts in the past, and this would be something cool for us to actually talk about, I think, um, but I, I've been debating, every day I debate, like, if I do a piece of content today, what is the piece of content, and I've got a couple of guides on the back burner, but this is one that just jumped out to me and I really wanted to get out there, and let me, let me continue... Now that I've started, let me continue by saying I think this is a fundamentally flawed idea for a multitude of reasons. So, in the video, Slasher does say that um, he is not familiar with the uh, history of Observer Wards and was like, well, they came from Warcraft 3, so we just had to keep them. Observer Wards were not something that was a core element of Warcraft 3. They kind of were an element in Warcraft 3, depending on which race you played. Um, so, I believe you could buy them from... Uh, the neutral store, but they were not like a primary map element of every single match of Warcraft 3. Observer wards are exponentially more common and exponentially more important in Dota 2. In Warcraft 3, there wasn't a... You acquire wards on your hero at this point in the game, and then you place them at these strategic points on these strategic maps. They were just... A, they, they existed in the space, but they were not a every single game commonly viewed... Uh, thing that showed up, even at the highest level of play. Observer wards, so the primary argument of the video is again, observer wards should be removed because the position 5 currently sucks. And position 5 does kind of suck for most people, um, but I think a lot of people really don't understand why playing position 5 sucks. Because you're broke and you don't get as much experience, and you don't feel as important as the rest of your team. And all these are problems, but why are these problems? These are problems because you don't feel that you have the same level of influence as the other heroes on your team. So, for example, if you're in a professional match, all of these mechanics work fine. Like Slash was talking about maybe having pro teams play against each other when nobody buys Observer Wards. No. No, no, no. That is the worst fucking idea I have ever heard for the, sh for the single reason that that makes the game easier and it makes the game more simple. And we have been on a path where the game has been getting progressively easier and progressively more simple forever. Like, literally since Dota 2 has came out, we've never really made the game harder. We've never made the mechanics more complicated since the game came out. Except for a few isolated incidents, and those are all hero-specific. So, for example, Nyx Assassin's stun that's ground-targeted used to be hero-targeted, like Lion's stun is, and you could always hit it. That was something that we made more complicated for the sake of nerfing a specific hero. Because Nyx was too good at the time. The game as a whole has only gotten easier since Dota 2's inception in 2012. Uh, well, sorry, uh, Dota 2's inception in... Mid-late 2011, but I started in the middle of 2012, so I'm going with that uh, perspective and that position. That's the time I'm going to use for my sake of argument, because I'm familiar with, but not extremely fluent with, the changes that happened in the first half of 2012 and the fourth quarter of 2011. So, words are not a big part of Warcraft 3. Slasher also posits that in Counter-Strike you don't struggle with this problem. In Counter-Strike, everyone feels like they carry more weight uh, proportional to the other people on the team, compared to Dota 2, where your 1 and your 2 and your 3, especially your 1 and your 2, carry way more weight in your pubs. 
yeah, we're a team game with a very, very specific hierarch hierarchical structure that we have invented for the game to make us better at the game, to make our teams better at the game. Position one, two, three, four, five. Something no, it, nobody really talked in that language in 2012 and 13, except for the people at the top. And that's something that the American and European scenes basically took from the Chinese scenes because the Chinese teams talked about the game in that light. And now it's sort of bled all the way down into pubs. Because of how connected the top tier of play is to the bottom tier of play, everyone sort of thinks and talks in the same terms because everyone tries to do the thing that is best. And thinking of the game as a one, two, three, four, and five is a more effective way to play than thinking us think that than thinking about it as everyone's playing on an equal foot. So the game's easier than it's ever been. Why do I have Observer Wards up? So Observer Wards right now cost... They cost 80 a pop, and you can buy two of them for 160 gold. You only have to buy one of them to buy them. When I started, it was 200 gold for two, and you had to buy a two-pack. So if you were a solo support, you had to spend 200 gold, so 40 more than now, to get two wards. You bought both of them, and then you gave one of those wards to your offlaner, and you had to rely on your offlaner being relatively competent to place the ward in a, in a useful spot. I'm not trying to complain because it was harder when I started playing the game. I'm not complaining for the sake of, well, I've always, I've always had to deal with this, and when I was a new player, I had to deal with this, so all the new players need to deal with this. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we've been making the game easier and easier, and I do, I agree with these changes. I, I think Observer Wards should only be 80 gold. I think you should only have to buy two of them. But it takes 150 seconds for one ward to replenish the stock. So if you bought every single possible ward, that would reduce your GPM, so we have two and a half times 80. So, what's that, like... 30, 35 GPM, that's all you're reducing it by. Yes, it does reduce your GPM farther because you have to move toward them. And while you're moving toward, you're not getting CS, you're not killing neutrals, you're not getting money elsewhere. But you're a position 5. So it doesn't matter because your hero has not been engineered. The way that you are playing that hero and the way you are thinking about that hero should not be centered around you getting money. That's it. So many of these position 5 heroes have experience bonus talents, which make up for the fact that you have to leave the lane to place wards. That's one of the reasons these talents exist. And talents are a whole nother subject. Talents have made the position 5 easier. They have made the position 5 more fun. Again, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing on making the game easier. All of these things, in my opinion, are good changes. But we don't need to neuter the depth of our game by removing Observer Wards. We don't, if you take away that element, you make the game way more linear. You make the game way more uh, symmetrical. The thing that makes Dota great is that it's so incredibly asymmetrical. It's so unpredictable. It makes it, It's what makes the skill ceiling so high. And yes, to give you that classic line, it is the thing that separates us from games like League of Legends. And equally important games like StarCraft 2. It is the asymmetry of the game and the unpredictability of the game that makes it so good. It's the reason the game has lived as long as it has and the reason people are so passionate about passionate about it. It's the reason why our competitive matches are so awesome to watch and why they're so drastically different from pickup groups, pickup games. So, what is the ultimate What's the solution for this? Well, I'm not sure if I know the solution, but I can give you a good ex I can better describe the problem because the problem isn't that you don't have a lot of money. I think we've established pretty reasonably that you're not suddenly going to have 100 more GPM if we get rid of those server wards because you're taking time to move around the map with those wards. And if you grab the courier, then you're using even less time. So you potentially are getting even, you're potentially like, I don't know, we'll say 50 GPM, and that's saying 50 GPM over the course of a game, if you're buying all of the possible wards, is very generous because I've, we've already established that it's actually about 30 GPM if you're in just buying the wards. It's only about 30 GPM. So 
you also have to buy the courier. Well, back in the day, you had to upgrade the courier. Now that it just automatically upgrades. How much does the courier cost? I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't know off the top of my head because it's been so long since I played a position five. I think it's 150, right? It's 150? Um, animal courier. Should be 150. Health, 150. Is it 125? Pretty sure it's 150. Give me one second. It says 100, that can't be right. Is it 100? That can't be right, that's so cheap. You can't be complaining about that, because like, back in the day, it was more than a hundred to get the courier, and then you had to spend even more gold to upgrade it. A hundred gold for a courier is literally nothing. It's so ch Oh, it's two hundred gold. That's what I thought. That sounds more reasonable. I actually thought it was 150. But two hundred gold at the start is not that big of a tax. And in the course of, by 10 minutes, that should be completely gone. The thing, the point I'm trying to make is, okay, so let's, let's go to dust. Just the sake of it. So uh, dust is expensive, but dust has always been very expensive. And it's not something that gets adjusted because of the fact that it's not as strong in professional games as it is in pubs. Because in pubs, people are so... People still lean toward invis invisible heroes because they're so strong um, against greedy players because greedy players don't buy dust. So... That's one of the reasons that, and, and because in professional games, your supports are going to carry dust against invisible heroes, you suddenly come into this trade-off where dust maybe should only cost 100 gold for pubs. But in professional games, dust weighs so much more that it needs to cost 180 or it's imbalanced. So you have to go with the more expensive price because the more expensive price is balanced to the highest level of play and you always want to balance your game around the highest level of play whenever possible. Sometimes you'll see changes like nerfs to uh, a nerf to pudge is something where it's kind of just a nerf to uh, it's, it's a nerf to pubs more than it is to the professional scene, though pudge has been seen in top tier games lately. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Like, the, the ultimate goal is to balance the game around the highest level of play, because that leads to the highest level of play. Smoke of Deceit's 50 gold, right? It's 80 gold now. So, Smoke of Deceit's 80 gold. You're not buying smokes all the time, especially in pubs. So, in pubs, smoke is... Uh, the price of smoke is less significant than professional games, because you're less coordinated, and smoke is an item that is exponentially more valuable the more coordinated your team is. So, it's not as important. The point I'm trying to make is that even if you're buying all of the support items, and usually somebody on your team will buy some support item other than the five, occasionally, if you're in mid-level pubs. That might have just triggered a whole bunch of people, but regardless, you don't, you don't have no money because you're buying support items. You have no money because you're not CSing because you're not killing creeps, because you're giving it all to everyone else on your team because you're prioritizing their farm over yours. And there's no item change that you can make that's going to fix that. That's just part of the game. The thing that sucks about being a position five isn't even that you have no money. The thing that sucks about being a position five is that you'll find yourself in a 30, 40 minute game. You're the position five. You're the brokest person on your team. Your team is losing, maybe not by much, but is still losing. And by being the brokest person on the losing team, that means you are the weakest, less threatening, less significant player on that map. You are the weakest and least significant player in the game. And it sucks to be that guy and to play that role and lose because you're trusting strangers with carrying you. You're trusting strangers with bringing you through that game. Professional players don't worry, don't feel as crap about it as we do because they're putting their trust into Resolution and Miracle and Dendi and 
S4 and all these amazing uh, one and two position players. Heck, even three position players. But if you're a pleb like me, then playing the support is ultimately horrible, be not because you spend so much money on items supporting your team, but because you willingly give up the amount of net worth and experience you have, usually one of those two will be neg uh, negated by talents if you're p picking a traditional five position. And when you give those up, you're giving them up to strangers who may be worse than you at playing those one and two positions, which makes the game really, really frustrating. What's the solution to this? What's the solution to this? I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea how you fix that. I think the best way to fix that is to add in things like these talents. I think the talents have actually made it very, very uh, fun. I think the talents have done a lot because now with certain heroes, you're guaranteed to have more experience. You're guaranteed to get more gold because you can just click a button and you have a GPM talent. Not, not only that, you can pick that GPM talent, which will not only pay for all your support, your support items, your cheap items like your smoke and your dust and your wards, but will also contribute to your overall net worth, and you're literally inventing money. You're not taking it off the map, you're getting money essentially free from space, just injected into the hero. So because of that, there's more... It's like basically you should always be able to count on your jungle creeps and your ancients and your and link creeps. At least most of the link creeps to get money for your team. So the map's split in half and 50% of that farm goes to Radiant, 50 goes to Dire. And it's a fixed amount of maximum potential money on the map. But when you get those GPM talents, you literally indented free money. So if you're still competing and you're still getting 50% of the farm on the map, at least, then you're getting... You're not actually getting as much as the enemy, you're getting more than the enemy because you're getting money from an external source, a third party. What? Like, these talents, they haven't fixed everything. But I think they are the solution. And I think they've done a very good job of being the solution. I don't think we need to change anything to make the position 5 more fun. I would say if you don't enjoy the position 5, you're not playing the right hero. I guess that's... That's what I have to say. Uh, just one closing note. There's a there's a quote from Puppy. Uh, can't actually. Here we go. Everyone must forget the words carry, support, ganker. This is all rubbish. If you want to be useful to win the game, you must play on all heroes instead of crying like a baby when you have to play carry. The thing that's really, really significant about that quote is it shows... This is a very, very old quote. This quote's at least five or six, seven, maybe seven, maybe even older than that many years old. Like, it's a very, 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 very old quote from Puppy. And I think the really interesting thing about it is people crying like a baby when you have to play carry. Because back in the day, carry was a position that people didn't want to play because you had to spend so much time farming instead of actually being involved with the action and fighting. So maybe in the future we will see a Dota where this comes back. But I think this is temporary. I think this is something that the meta will work out. And I think that just gradually touching on the problems with the position 5 and the heroes that are most commonly associated with the position 5 will fix this. I absolutely... 100% wholeheartedly disagree with the idea of getting rid of wards in Dota 2. This has been a way longer rant than I thought it would be, but thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Esports Money, ZSM, Mac10, whatever you want to call me. If you like this video, please hit those like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully more live streams and hero guides soon. Thanks!